The war between Russia and Ukraine, the largest war so far in the 21st century, has somewhat downplayed the role of tanks. Because of modern anti-tank systems, and especially because of drones, tanks have become very vulnerable. As a result, we don't see the deep tank breakthroughs that we had back in Operation Desert Storm in the early 1990s of the 20th century. Not to mention World War II. But do we have to give up on tanks? No. And this is proved by the American tank M1 Abrams, which for many years has been the epitome of technology, power, and combat endurance. Until the latest Ukrainian-Russian military conflict in the center of Europe, Abrams was rightfully considered the ideal military vehicle. In this video, we'll talk about this legendary tank and prove that the title of an ideal military vehicle still retains, despite everything. Don't believe? Then see for yourself. First, a bit of history. When in the 1970s the US faced the need to upgrade its tank forces, more than just rearmament was at stake. There was a fierce technology race with the Soviet Union, where every misstep could turn into a strategic defeat. America needed a tank that would become the quintessence of power, endurance, and technological innovation. And that tank was the M1 Abrams. In 1980, the world saw a tank that immediately changed the rules of the game. The M1 Abrams was astonishingly innovative. A gas turbine engine designed for incredible mobility, and a unique composite armor capable of withstanding blows that would destroy any competitor. This tank became what it was intended to be from the beginning – an iron fist on the battlefield. Already in 1985, the modernized M1A1 came on the scene. Equipped with a 120mm smoothbore gun, capable of penetrating any armor of its time. This tank became not just a machine, but a real threat to any enemy armored vehicles. However, most importantly, it proved its lethality in real battles. The Persian Gulf War showed that Abrams can destroy enemy tanks with incredible accuracy and at a considerable distance. The 1990s brought a new version. The M1A2. It was no longer just a tank, but a high-tech combat system. Advanced electronics, digital fire control systems, the ability to exchange data with other units – all this brought the Abrams to a new level. This tank has become smart, gaining the ability to be not only a machine of destruction, but also a coordinator on the battlefield. With each new conflict, the M1 Abrams proved that it is not in vain that it takes its place among the best tanks in the world. But what exactly makes this vehicle so outstanding? The M1A2 is armed with the M256 120mm smoothbore gun. This steel thunderer uses various types of ammunition, including subcaliber and shaped charge rounds. One of the most powerful subcaliber ammunition the M829A3 is capable of penetrating at least 700 mm of armor at a distance of 2 km. That is, it can penetrate the armor on any Russian or Chinese tank, and with very high accuracy. The projectiles for Abrams can be programmed for different purposes – air burst to hit infantry, instantaneous detonation to destroy light-armored vehicles, and delayed explosion to fight heavy-armored vehicles. In addition to the 120mm cannon, the Abrams has three remotely operated machine guns to engage infantry. A 12.7mm M2HB machine gun on the commander's turret, a 7.62mm M240 machine gun in mated mounting with the cannon, and another 7.62mm M240 machine gun on a rack at the loader's hatch, as well as two six-shot smoke grenade launchers to create a smokescreen. The fire control system is a technical masterpiece. Infrared sensors, laser rangefinders, and stabilizers allow for aimed fire even on the move and in poor visibility conditions. In night combat conditions, the Abrams turns into a predator that sees the target before it realizes the danger. One of the main trump cards of the M1A2 is its armor. Composite materials reinforced with depleted uranium create a very reliable protection. For example, the frontal armor of the M1 Abrams tank has an equivalent thickness of about 600 mm against the subcaliber shells and up to 1100 mm against shaped charge shells in the M1A2 SEP 
V3HT version. Right now, Russian tanks have the 3BM42 Mango as their main subcaliber projectile, capable of penetrating 500 mm of armor. That is, it cannot cope with the Abrams. In practice, this means that Abrams can withstand blows that would turn other tanks into piles of scrap metal. But engineers have gone even further. Additional reinforcement in the form of the Trophy Active Defense System was a real breakthrough. The system uses ELM-2133 radars with phased antenna arrays that provide 360-degree coverage. These radars detect and track approaching threats such as anti-tank missiles and grenades. An onboard computer analyzes the data from the radars and calculates the threat's flight path. When the threat approaches a critical distance, the system activates launchers that fire anti-missiles that destroy the munition before it reaches the target. The Trophy Active Defense System is capable of neutralizing threats flying at speeds of up to 1,000 meters per second. There are no anti-tank missile systems in the world whose missiles fly faster. For example, the missile of the main Russian anti-tank system, Cornet, flies at a speed of only 250 meters per second. To protect the side projections and turret roof, Abrams reactive armored tiles and tank urban survival kits are used. These elements explode on contact with the attacking projectile, reducing its impact on the main armor. All this together turns the M1A2 into a moving fortress, which is very difficult to destroy. But if, in spite of everything, the enemy managed to hit a turret with a four-man crew, what happens? Will the ammunition explode and the men die? No. Abrams is not a Russian tank where the ammunition is either in the turret, right next to the people, not separated from them, or under the turret. In any case, its detonation turns the tank into the vent of a volcano, which literally incinerates people, leaving a pile of shapeless melted metal in place of the vehicle, while the turret flies away for dozens of meters. In Abrams, ammunition is located in a special compartment in the turret, separated from people by a powerful armor plate. This compartment has special knockout panels. When the ammunition is detonated, the shock waves throws them away, and all its power and flames go into the air without causing any harm to the crew. After that, the tank can even stay on the move. Despite weighing 68 tons, which is about the same as 35 passenger cars, the Abrams can reach speeds of up to 70 kilometers per hour, or 45 miles per hour, thanks to its AGT-1500 gas turbine engine. Its 1500 horsepower allows the tank not only to move quickly, but also to overcome difficult obstacles. The main indicator of the tank's dynamism is specific power, the ratio of its engine power to weight. The higher it is, the faster the tank is. The Abrams has this indicator equal to 24.5 horsepower per ton. For comparison, the Israeli Merkava has a specific power of 21.4 horsepower per ton. The German Leopard 2 has 21.2, the British Challenger 2 has 19.2, and the Russian T-90A has 21.5 horsepower per ton. In this context, Abrams can be compared to a rhinoceros. Big, heavy, but if it chases, you can't run away. You'll trample it or on a horn. But this engine has a significant disadvantage – high fuel consumption. On average, it consumes 4 liters per 1 mile of movement and 45 liters per hour at idle. Let's dispel the myth that Abrams needs some special fuel. No, it's an omnivorous beast. It can use a variety of fuels including DF2 diesel, JP8 aviation, kerosene, and other fuels. However, mobility is not just about speed. Tank suspension and maneuverability make the M1A2 ideal for everything from sandstorms to urban environments. The modern M1A2 is not just a fighting vehicle, but a mobile command center. Communication and control systems allow the crew to coordinate with other units, making the tank an important element of networked operations. It's not just a military tool, but a full-fledged member of an integrated combat system. The M1A2 has proven its effectiveness in the harshest environments from the deserts of the Middle East to the city streets. It has become a nightmare for enemies and a source of pride for allies. You may ask, if Abrams is so great, why hasn't it proven itself in Ukraine? 
After all, 31 tanks were delivered there, and some of them have already been destroyed. Well, the answer is very simple. For reasons that are unclear, the Pentagon gave Ukraine the oldest modifications of Abrams without uranium armor. Also, these tanks had neither dynamic protection, nor trophy system, nor modern navigation and guidance devices, nor new generation thermal imaging matrices. In fact, Ukraine was fighting with a tank of the 70s of the last century against armaments of the 21st century. Therefore, this result was, alas, predictable. But in any case, the technology and military in the first place is moving forward. Will Abrams, which for decades has been standing guard over the world order and U.S. interests, be able to meet the challenges of the future? After all, even legends grow old. Might it be better to cede the throne to a successor? Say goodbye to Abrams? Yes, goodbye and hello to the new Abrams, the Abrams X. A new era is dawning for the once perfect machine. Abrams X is not just a modernization, but a revolution that could change the idea of tank warfare forever. But will it live up to the expectations placed upon it? The Abrams X will have an uninhabited turret and a three-man crew, meaning it will not have a loader. It will be located at the front of the hull in an armored capsule. The loader will be replaced by an automatic loader for the XM360 120mm gun with a ported muzzle brake. Observation and targeting is based on two 360-degree panoramic roof-mounted sights that incorporate next-generation multi-sensor daylight, thermal imaging, and laser rangefinders. The Abrams X tank gun can use next-generation munitions that are flight-guided, capable of engaging targets more than 5 miles or 8 kilometers away while maneuvering for a precision hit. The tank is designed so that the 120mm cannon can be replaced with a more powerful gun. For example, the German company Rheinmetall is developing a 130mm gun for tanks, which may become standard in the future. An obvious improvement in lethality over current tanks is the installation of a 30mm remote-controlled battle station, with a gun on the turret roof instead of the traditional heavy machine gun. The 30mm XM914 gun not only increases the ability to engage a range of lightly armored and protected targets, but using airburst programmable ammunition offers both a more effective response to anti-tank teams and the ability to engage drones. One of the Abram X's most high-profile innovations has been its hybrid propulsion system. This is a bold answer to its predecessor's main weakness – monstrous fuel consumption. It promises to not only increase efficiency, but also reduce dependence on cumbersome logistics. The propulsion system will utilize an advanced Cummins diesel engine as the primary power source with the addition of electric batteries in a parallel configuration. This will power the tank systems with the diesel engine off during periods of low power demand, such as parking or silent duty mode. Power will be able to be tuned from 750 to 1500 horsepower, with the tank consuming 50% less fuel, with the same operating radius as the Abrams A1M2, and will also gain low noise, low speed capability and sonic camouflage. The tank can now approach the enemy stealthily, which is especially important in urban environments. The Abrams X turns into a predator that sees but remains invisible. If the M1A2 was a high-tech machine, the Abrams X is artificial intelligence on tracks. If the M1A2 was a fortress, the Abrams X is a fortress that thinks. Its systems are capable of analyzing the battlefield, independently prioritizing targets, and even offering tactical solutions. The tank will have its own reconnaissance drones that the crew can launch directly from the vehicle to survey the battlefield and find targets. Additionally, the Abrams X will feature enhanced networking capabilities, interaction with drones, coordination with other tanks, and access to a global command and control system make Abrams X not just a fighter, but a leader in the digital battlefield. Thanks to artificial intelligence and networking capabilities, one of the Abrams X modifications will be unmanned remote controlled. This allows the tank to be used without a crew in particularly dangerous conditions. 
The Abrams X will also receive electronic defense systems that make it resistant to attacks using an electromagnetic pulse that can blind or disable electronics. The Abrams X composite armor is even lighter and stronger. In addition, this armor will be modular. That is, depending on the type of threats on the tank, the armor can be changed to another type of armor quickly. But most importantly, it will be equipped with the latest active defense systems that work not just to intercept threats, but to detect and neutralize them early. This makes the tank virtually invulnerable to even the most advanced anti-tank weapons. In addition, the developers have emphasized weight reduction. The Abrams X will become lighter, which will improve its mobility and expand its transportation capabilities. Moreover, it is supposed to create a lightweight version for transportation by air, even by medium military aircraft, such as the C-130 Hercules. But not all is rosy. Innovation is expensive and the Abrams X risks becoming an even more costly project than its predecessor. In addition, the complexity of its systems requires new crew training and special maintenance conditions, which can be an additional challenge. Abrams X is not just a tank, but a symbol of a new era in which technology is becoming the main weapon. Its development is a bold step into the future. But will it be as successful as the M1A2? There is no definite answer yet. But one thing is already clear. If the Abrams X becomes as legendary as its predecessor, it will not only just continue the tradition, but will create a new era of tank forces. The reality is this. New wars require new solutions. The world no longer forgives mistakes. And advanced technology becomes both an advantage and a vulnerability. Abrams X is a bet that the tank can be not only a killing machine, but also a tool for digital domination. Will it live up to those hopes? History will tell. But one thing remains constant. The Abrams X is more than a tank. It's a symbol of the era it has served and continues to serve, changing perceptions of warfare and what ideal military vehicles should be. What do you think? Do tanks have a future? And will the Abrams X become the ideal war machine that the Abrams M1 was for many years? Share your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching.